So now in this very last video on the endocrine system one, I know it's a long lecture, uh, just bear with me, it's a very short flow chart, just to end things and summarize things, we're going to be looking at the idea of tissues and glands. Because now what we're going to be doing as we move and transition to endocrine system 2, where we actually talk about specific hormones, is talking about where they come from. Hormones are secreted, right? Things from the endocrine system are secreted. That's a theme that we've seen thus far. And the location of that secretion is important because it can either be secreted through two types of mechanisms, either an endocrine gland, and that's basically everything that we've seen today in the endocrine system. Also, there's the idea of exocrine glands, both of which have similarities but a little bit of differences that we have to make sure we show the distinction between. An endocrine gland will be something that is ductless, okay? This will involve anything that's ductless, ductless glands and tissues. Also tissues, that's why we put tissues as the title. When we say ductless, we mean there's no duct. Now, there's no easy way of sort of explaining the idea of a duct without telling you that you have to look at figure 45.9 to see when you have a duct and when you do not have a duct and how it affects the way that the gland secretes things. Now, an endocrine gland that's ductless and does not have uh, any uh, of those ducts that we've been talking about, this will usually function uh, in the nervous system. And that's because what we have here is the regulation of metabolism via endocrine glands. They regulate metabolism. And if you regulate metabolism, so this regulates metabolism, that's breakdown and build up of substances, anabolism and catabolism, as we've said before. When we have this regulation, this is going to cause a homeostatic mechanism. This is essentially a homeostatic response and homeostatic maintenance, I'd like to say. And all of this is governed by the nervous system. The brain governs how an endocrine system is going to secrete things, if it's going to secrete things, how much it's going to secrete, how much it's not going to secrete, all of which is regulated and homeostatically maintained uh, by the nervous system, the brain, which we'll get to as we move forward through these lectures. Now, exocrine glands are a little bit different because these are uh, glands in which substances are still secreted. The crin ending is going to tell you that something is secreted, but substances are secreted via ducts. So this is where we actually utilize ducts. Not the lake animals, but these ducts, okay? The ducts are going to be usually... Uh, and the secretions will usually be onto the body surface. That's usually where ducts are found for the most part. And again, you already see that these are usually internal, ductless, right? But these are external, onto the body surface, and sometimes even into a body cavity. And what we mean by that is the following examples, which will make a lot of sense when you see them. Um, things like sweat. Sweat is going to be released via ducts, exocrine glands, that are going to release that sweat molecule or sweat droplet onto the body surface. Something like mucus. Mucus is secreted. How is it secreted? It's secreted via ducts inside a body cavity known as our nostrils. Let's say the opening is the nostrils, the nose, and mucus will be secreted via exocrine glands. In addition, digestive enzymes also that are within uh, the body cavity that is known as our elementary canal, let's say. Those are going to be secreted as well. And digestive enzymes within our mouth, which we'll see also, it's like salivary amylase, those will also be secreted into that body cavity as an exocrine form. Overall, take a look at figure 45.9 to visually see the distinction between these. Um, and that ends endocrine system one. I'm very excited about these physiology lectures. I love talking about this stuff. Hopefully you can see that there's a lot to appreciate when we start talking about things that are happening within our bodies every single day without us having to think about them for a second. Uh, and we'll continue looking at physiology as we move forward through these lectures.